after traveling 50 kilometers. Super Select is off. Changing into Super Select. Nothing happens. And it's not working. Stop the engine. Restart. Does its test. And we're all good to go again. Another 50 Ks. Right, so I've got the dreaded center diff light flash. For me, it happens after 50 kilometers in two wheel drive and it turns off the super select. If I stay in four wheel drive the whole time or 4H, it doesn't turn off, it doesn't do anything strange, it's really weird. I looked underneath and found um, oil coming through the free wheel actuator. I've got the sensor replaced, still doing it. I've had a look at the cables coming up underneath the side of the uh, transfer case. No wires are bent, nothing rusty, nothing broken. And I put my hand up over the top of the transfer case Felt all the sensors, everything feels intact, everything feels good. What I did do then though, this is an NW2013, I removed the air filter underneath that, two solenoids. And of course, one of the solenoids is not working. Now, there's one for two wheel drive, one for four wheel drive, and they cause a vacuum. So when I had somebody inside the car with the engine running, and they changed from 2H to 4H, you can feel a vacuum coming through the 2H solenoid, but when it changes to 4H, nothing happens. So this is where it is. It sits underneath the air filter, down underneath there. And I've got a snorkel fitted, so it makes it even more difficult. So what I've done is I've gone to eBay and bought a genuine new solenoid kit. They range from $18 for a Chinese version, hundreds of dollars depending on where you want to buy the genuine Mitsubishi one from. This one cost me 60, including shipping. And inside, is a new solenoid pair. So you've got the two vacuum pumps attached to the top and a little plate to bolt onto the body. So I am gonna have to remove the air filter assembly. I'm gonna have to make sure that if I do any testing, I plug this little sucker back in or else I'll have a check engine light come up. So off with the top of the air filter cover, out with the air filter, remove the three bolts underneath and I'll get back to you in a second. Right, so that's the assembly apart, except I still haven't removed the bottom part of the air filter assembly. Uh, as you can see, there are three bolts on there to remove. The one little gotcha is the two little plastic clips at the rear and two little tongues that sit up on the top part of the assembly that they've got to unclick and click back in when you put it back together. And of course in here is just the air filter. I'm just sitting it here just to be neat so I don't lose anything. Right, so out with the three bolts, and then we get right to the heart of the matter. Okay, so I've released those three bolts. The only other thing I need to contend with, which you may not need to, is I've got a snorkel which is pop riveted on down here and sealed. And if I follow it back, there's a rubber connection under here, which if I'm very careful, I can stick a screwdriver through this hole and you can see that the bracket has got a screw on top. I can release that and pull it all out. So I got myself a screwdriver. I've now released the screw down here, which has allowed me to bring out the bottom of the air filter assembly with the tube intact. And finally, down here, underneath the water bottle is the two solenoids. You can just see the top one there. We may have to remove this aftermarket water bottle for the snorkel. As it turns out, I can't get to one of the bolts on my little assembly, so I'm having to remove the water bottle. And then underneath the water bottle, I can now get to both of the bolts holding in the assembly, and now I can remove it. The important thing now is to remember where these hoses are attached get them the right way onto the right solenoid and to unclip these power connectors at the back which are quite actually difficult to get to so I'll now do that and pull the part out 
and be aware that there is a yellow dot and a blue dot signifying uh, which solenoid is which. Before I put this new one in, so what you've got is you've got the electrical assembly goes in here, let's get that the right way around. You've got to fit two vacuum hoses here and then you've got two to fit here. And a bit worried about this kink in mine. I might use the old vacuum hose off the old one. Looks a bit funny, but anyway, let's see how we go. Okay, so I unbolted and removed the old one, and I've now plugged in the new one. And the way that I remember this, because I don't have blue and yellow dots on my um, tubes, uh, there's a metal spreader that's, uh, that separates the two tubes going back a little bit back here and what I did is I made sure that I knew the top one comes up and goes into the blue and the one underneath which is this one here goes into the yellow now also in my case the unit that came from Mitsubishi the hose was bent and I think that was going to cause a problem so I actually used the old hoses and I've just made sure they're clear and we get air can get all the way through. So I took off this one, and as you can see at the top here it's bent, bit of a worry, and I keep it as a spare. And no, my old bits did not come out cleanly, so they're all broken and stuffed up, and it's a real pain to get this electrical connector off. Um, I ended up having to put a screwdriver on the outside of the chassis and pushing down to actually to get it to come off. And wriggling these hoses off, wow, they're tight. But I got them off. So now I've got to do everything in reverse, put the water bottle back, um, put back all the air filter components, and give it a test run. And hopefully this is also going to stop an annoying little rattle, sort of a grinding, grunting noise that I've been hearing. Hopefully this will put an end to that, which has been really annoying me for quite a while. So I've put the aftermarket snorkel based water bottle back in and uh, as I can now see, I'm glad I removed it, there's no room to move in there. Um, so I've checked all the hoses are pushed on properly and I've checked that the, um, the, me the uh, metal contacts from the electrical side are all clipped in properly. I've bolted it to the body nice and tight. Time to put the lid back on and give it a go. So if you had to do major surgery like I did, Make sure, again, you tighten your snorkel if you've got one. Again, I got access to it through this little hole here. You can probably see the screw, well, maybe not screw down there if I've got access to a screwdriver. The water pump is nice and screwed in tight. Made sure that I haven't caused any leaks in it from pulling all the cables in various directions. Three bolts holding the bottom of the air filter assembly in. Then the two tongues at the back to make sure they're in nice and tight, which is a real pain. Clamped it down, one, two, three on the front. Tightened up back there. Made sure the emissions control, etc. is all plugged in properly. Now I can turn the engine on. Well, I think I'm okay. I've got no check engine light. I do have my handbrake light on. I've got no flashing central diff light, but I'll know after I've done 50 Ks. And I changed Super Select, and she changes. Well, it looks like it's okay, although I don't trust those lights anymore after what I've been seeing. And I think that weird noise under the bonnet has actually gone. But I'll only know once I get up to 2,000 revs and see how we go. But anyway, it's all looking pretty okay. For those of you not mechanically inclined, I've taken my car now to three different mechanics. I've spoken to numerous people. I've used code readers. I've used code readers, I've done everything to try and find this fault. I've had to fix this myself. Now, you saw how difficult it wasn't. Just to give you some faith, if you're in the same boat that I'm in, yes, it took me ages to figure this out and how to fix it, but I did it myself. I'm an IT engineer, I know nothing about cars. Okay, I owe everything I know to my brother, thank you CJ, who helped me find this fault and showed me how to pull it apart the first time so I could fix it myself. So anyone can do this, fix your car, get you back on the road. Remember, I'm an IT engineer, I sit behind a desk, I thump a keyboard, I do not handle tools.